ATN was built as a radio controlled drone. It carries a 2,000 pound bomb or two smaller bombs. The television camera is located in the nose. Other equipments by which radio control is effected are located in the fuselage after the cockpit. These equipments are complex. It requires extensive training and experience to maintain and operate them. Short views show the ground truck and the TDN drone. The picture of the ground operator shows also a close-up of the control box used to control the drone. Bombs and the fuses are checked in position. The drone is check tested before flight using hand signals or walkie talkie. The TDN takes off under radio control without pilot. The takeoff is normal. TDN is under control either of ground equipment or control plane. The side view of the takeoff shows the attitude of the plane, both while taxiing and at the time of takeoff. lands under radio control. This is for practice only. When taking off for combat, the TBF control plane is spotted at the end of the runway with the drones in advance. The drones are being taken off by control plane. The first drone is airborne to the left of the runway. The second drone takes off as soon as the first is clear. It is followed by the TBF control plane. The drones here shown are converted SNBs. drones shown here are under radio control. The control plane does not appear in the picture. The drones move as directed by the control pilot. They make simultaneous turns to the right and to the left. They are kept at constant altitude by the altimeter control. The equipment used permits simultaneous control of four drones. Independent control of each drone is shown in the last sequence where a column turn is made. The first drone turns to the left while the second continues on course until it reaches the pivot, where it is turned to the left and follows the leading drone. Pictures taken on board the USS Sable show the first three radio control takeoffs from the deck of a carrier. The 
The first takeoff is successful, although the plane climbs very steeply. The second drone takes off, but operating technique is incorrect. The climb is too steep. The plane stalls and crashes to the left of the carrier. The third takeoff is successful. The drones after takeoff are returned under radio control to the base. The following pictures were made of tests conducted by Special Air Task Force on board the USS Charger. They show the first NOLO catapult takeoffs made by radio-controlled planes in the deck of a carrier. The tests were observed by Vice Admiral Bellinger, Commander Aircraft, Atlantic Fleet. The bomb load carried by the first five TDNs to be seen in these pictures was 1,400 pounds. Here the TDN drones are seen lined up on the flight deck and are check tested by radio men four to five hours prior to flight. The tests comprise four flights, each for a different purpose. Flight A was for the purpose of determining the effect of catapult launching on control equipment. The TDN drone has taken off under control of the TBM control plane on the after end of the deck, which then follows the drone. Flight B determined the effect of catapulting on the multiple control features of radio controlled flight. After the TBM control plane and the two TDN drones are in the air, the TBM standby control plane is catapulted. Here the two drones are seen under control by the pilot in the control plane en route to the target. The purpose of Flight C was to determine procedures and time intervals for launching the planes under actual combat conditions. Time intervals between takeoffs on this flight averaged three minutes, as may be noted on the recording blackboard. With a carrier crew more familiar with this work, the time between takeoffs should be cut approximately in half. Flight D determined the ability of the TDN to be catapulted with full 2,000 pound bomb load. Here the control planes return to the carrier after completing their mission. All six drones were launched successfully. The PB-4Y of the type used in this test is already equipped with ASG-3 radar. Since this installation is the type used in the PV and TBM control planes now assigned Special Air Task Force, Conversion time is therefore cut approximately 70% by the use of such planes. An SNB drone with safety pilot aboard takes off. 
When airborne, control will be taken over by the PB4Y. Inside the PB4Y, the control pilot watches the image on the television screen and is thus able to maneuver the drone with his control box. A close-up of the television screen. This is the front view of the control pilot who is guiding the drone. By use of the keys on his control box, directional impulses are sent to the drone. Through the control antenna, which may be seen in this view of the PB4Y, just abaft the homing loop. Back in the plane, the control pilot is now about to key for automatic altimeter control. Sending the drone down to the desired altitude. As the drone approaches the target area, the pilot arms the bombs. In actual operations, range of employment will depend upon speed and endurance of the combination drone and control plane used. The SNB drone is now making its run on a moving ship. For the purpose of this test run, the drone has been set at a safe altitude. In combat operations, the drone is of course set for an altitude which will ensure ramming the target. 